Okay, and we're live. All right, then. Off to you, Dad. All right. Welcome, Welcome. to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Ready to go? Google Plus hanging out with Canada 50 and 500 PX. We're here to talk about hidden places of a lifetime in Canada and how we chose the photographs that we used on that website in order to promote the 50 places of a lifetime. Who have we got here with me? Okay. Well, when we decided to choose the 50 places of a lifetime in Canada, what we did was we contacted experts all over Canada and asked them what, what their 50 favorite places were. We took from a list of about 120 to 150, and cut it down, cut it down to 50 places to try to represent, to represent all, of the all of the region of Canada. 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 Then, then the difficult part, the difficult part of photographs, photographs, photographs where these happen. happen. There were two, there were two main, main photographers, photographers that got about 20, 20 other places. places. And, and they, they were uh, Catherine Parnell and Chris Rainier. Now, 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 we had to choose the places first, and we actually, on Google Maps, put a pin in every place in Canada on the map. And then, and then I sat down and I looked to see where those places like, crossed, or so we would say Catherine Parnell. Where was the place you could go to get the most destinations in the least amount of time? And it turned out for Catherine that was Western Canada, and so she covered um, mainly British Columbia, and then she dashed over Winnipeg for one thing. Uh, as we're trying to plan out the photography, I guess that this is a different kind of photo assignment because usually a photographer will go to a place. They'll spend a week or two there. They have all kinds of time to research and plan what they're going to do. But this is a type of thing where I only needed one photograph from each place, maybe two, because we have a lot of nice photographers that have extra photos from the places. And it's really a different way to work, because you've got to hit the ground running, zoom in, try to get that picture, try to be there at the right time of day, in good light. Try to get nice pictures of people is quite a challenging exercise. Usually I count it on about two days in order to get one picture. Now that might sound kind of ridiculous because certainly on any given afternoon you could get hundreds of pictures. But both Catherine and Chris know that I just can't really, I, I want really special pictures. And I thought I was making it easier on them by just giving them one picture goal for two days. Now of course that means travel between the two places, so it's not really that much of a luxury of time. Uh, we have this selection of photos here, and I don't know, if Alex can show you, I can just roll through some of the photos and tell you why I chose the ones that we did. So the first destination I wanted to show you was um, Victoria. Go ahead and scroll to the top of that whole thing. Yeah, there we go. So this is Catherine's picture of Victoria. She shot this picture at twilight when she first arrived there. And it's a, you know, it's a really beautiful picture. It's kind of an ordinary picture of Victoria. And then next she really wanted her to go into, um, oh, this is a great picture because as a photo editor, I'm looking at Victoria, I'm thinking about the British influence, and we've got this bagpiper, and then we have the native, um, Totem pole in the background, and you've got young visitors playing with a bagpiper. It, it just sort of worked on a bunch of levels. Um, and then she also had this photograph of the harbor. Now, I knew that we were going to need a picture of Vancouver, and I was afraid that the Vancouver picture might look a little bit like the super water tax, so we ultimately decided not to use this picture. And then we move on, Catherine's. A master of looking for interesting things going on in the foreground, and I have the background brought a sense of place for her. And although this is a really nice picture, ultimately we decided to go with a picture of the gardens. And so this garden looks really wonderful, but you can see when she found out that at night it's lit and it just made it much, much better. 
And so for Victoria, ultimately, this is the picture you end up using for the website. Now, there is a photo gallery uh, where we used some of the other pictures, but this is what we kept referring to as the hero shot. Next destination was Niagara Falls. This is Chris Rainier's pictures of Niagara Falls. And this is the kind of picture that I like. We use the Family Magazine. We would rather have a picture of people taking part in the activities of a location rather than just a, you know, a beautiful scenic shot. But for this 50 places of life in Canada, Canada, I thought that maybe this picture was a little, little bit too close, close up, too much about, about this guy and his rainbow. So, so if you choose another, another photo, we back up a little, little bit. bit. We see the fall, falls in the background, and we start to see the tourist destination. But what happens if we back up a little bit more? And now I'm really starting to like the picture. And the final picture that we chose was taken at sunrise on the edge of the Horseshoe Falls on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And although I would say this picture violates my typical rules of having something interesting going on rather than just a scenic photograph, I think that the power of the water is undeniable in this picture. The beautiful light just shining through and pretty much everyone to a person when they saw this photograph, they just thought, whoa, that's a waterfall. Now the next one of the next destinations, this is Catherine's pictures of uh, just our island. And I had heard about Discover Islands and I read descriptions of it. And Catherine had actually been there before and she described it to me. And when I saw this picture, I thought, oh, that looks like the Discovery Islands. It's this charming houseboat. It's kind of, I don't know, it just looks like it's out in the wood. A cat out in the wood, but it's on the water instead. But then Catherine wanted to go to this lodge and have the experience of kayaking on the bay there. And then maybe we could just tell people what Discovery Islands are. Yeah, yeah. In terms of that many people may not know. Well, well the Discovery the Islands are off the coast of Vancouver. What do you know about yeah, it? Yeah, the, the Discovery, Discovery Islands, Islands are uh, between the British, British Columbia, Columbia uh, uh, mainland, mainland and Vancouver Island. 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 Uh, a little bit more, more towards the north, north, northern part of Vancouver Island. Island. Uh, and, and, and there's, there's a, just a number of uh, small, uh, many artists and communities, a lot of uh, deep sea fishing and, and sport fishing goes on there. Yeah, yeah. and it's on the list, it was you know, a great place to visit. So. Let's go back to the pictures, and so now Catherine is shooting, she's taking a picture that this is a real, in a sense it's a literal photograph because it shows the activities of the place and then the lodge where you can stay, and she's photographing it in different types of light. This is real typical, you can see the first picture, it's sort of, uh, in the afternoon the sun is behind the clouds and you come here and the sun comes out and the color really pops, and Catherine's just typically working with angles. Uh, a lot of photographers will do what we I like to refer to as dancing around the team. So you find a subject and you just mine that subject. You go around and around until you get it just right. And the picture that we ended up going with is much closer up, but the nature of the water in the foreground is what really just attracts us to it. Now, you can say this picture was a failure if you're trying to show the kayaks and the bay and the lodge, because the lodge is less visible in the background. But once again, this picture had a power and an energy just like the Niagara Falls picture did. And I, lo I love those water drops up behind her paddle. Mm -hmm. and that, yeah. The sunlight just poured through. Yeah, and the sunlight coming through. It's and you know, in, in previous days we would have said, oh, look at that horrible lens flare. But now we know. <laughs> in 2013, we need to go out of our way to make sure we have lens flare. <laughs> the next destination was on Muskoka. Um, no, I have a North Toronto uh, comedy, you know, the country. Yeah. yeah. And so Chris Rainier went up there and he found this perfect hotel. Everything is just wonderful. The light is just right. And, you know, it's just a little boring. It doesn't quite do it for me. And so. Very short shot off the hotel. Yeah. 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 But you have to shoot that picture. This is like doing calisthenics. You work your way into the photograph. Uh, and so now Chris is gone down at dawn, and we have this wonderful fog you know, mist on the water, but it's lacking a little bit because the sun wasn't really going to rise the way we wanted this morning, so that was kind of a bust. So then 
one evening he goes out and shoots his picture of the dog, which is really a fantastic design feature. I don't know that it really tells you much about Muskoka more than any place else in the world. And so I went on looking on the for something, something like another picture that could give us a little more sense. Now, I really thought on this picture because what I write about about the northern cottage industry and these old, you know, I guess the boat is probably 100 years old, almost 100 years old, the steamboat, the ferry series. I thought this was a lot, a lot to this part of the world, over other parts of the world. But, but, but I don't know, 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 not everybody agrees with me. And we went with this photograph of the old Chris Kraft type boat, sitting in the early morning sun. I'm guessing that it's the early morning, I can check exactly that. Typically, as you make photographs in a destination. If you're near the water, it works a lot better in the morning because the water uses a lot of time more than smoother. The next spot that we're going to talk about is Vancouver. So Catherine had a part of her trip. She had to go to Vancouver. And when you're photographing a city, it's really difficult to know what to do. She knows that the editors of the magazine love to see the pictures of the destinations, of the places that the people that visit Vancouver can go. So Catherine did some studying, and she talked to the folks, um, actually at the Canadian Tourism Office, and they suggested a few hotel restaurants she would go to. So Catherine is and that's a master laboratory. Sorry? That's a lab. Yeah. And so she, Catherine's a master at this type of photograph. And you see, I mean, it's sort of... It's just a picture of people sitting in an outdoor cafe, but she's not satisfied with these pictures of people eating and drinking. And you can see in this photograph, she's waiting until this moment when these people, it looks like they're having a good time. I think most viewers of this picture maybe would want to sit down at the table and share the meal with them. And it's kind of funny this morning when I was looking through these pictures, I thought, oh, these two guys have the exact same facial expression. <laughs> Uh, but you know, we're not sure there's a boat in these photographs, but Catherine went around to the city photographing it as she would if she was doing it for the magazine. And of course, all of our friends in Vancouver told us how important the Asian food culture is there. So Catherine was sure to get some pictures of some Asian food. And then, Adrian, you know the name of this place? Bao Bay? Uh, is that Bao Bay? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's it. That's a, a Chinese fusion restaurant uh, in Gasta, in Chinatown. China. Yeah, so there's the food from there. And then this is one of the photos. We used two photos of Vancouver. This is a photo we used in a gallery called City. And it's an interesting photo to look at because if you look at it photographically, you would think, oh, my God, look at that horrible picture. That girl is all out of focus. But you realize Catherine's really taking a picture of the lot of drinks in this place. And then the bartenders in the background are just sort of adding spice on top of it. And there was a number of photos of this, and I chose the one where this guy was really interacting with somebody in the restaurant. But then ultimately, what we used for Vancouver was this photograph, which is, you know, I don't know that there's very many other cities that look like Vancouver. And so, although I like all the pictures I've showed you up until this point, when we saw this picture, we thought, yeah, that's the in Vancouver. There's really no avoiding it. Um, has anybody been asking us any questions about these kind of things? I feel like I'm kind of blathering on. Um, maybe, you know, Bryce or Rolf? Or, yeah, Jody? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. You know, when I, I notice how you're choosing and you're going through this, a process for each photo. Do, are you thinking, like, well, if I use a photo that's close up, I have to use a wider one for the next shot? Like, do you have to whittle it down um, in that respect? We were thinking about that a little bit. With this type of product where you're, you, you have one photo represent each place primarily, right. yes, yes we, I do keep that in mind. You know, if it, yeah. if, but it's not so much in every other photo thing. It's just sort of looking at your mind if you feel like you've had too many pictures from the same point of view. That's a really good point. It's something we really have to think about. Um, and the way we mainly do it is when you think you've chosen all of the hero shots, you know, we're going to open them up in a browser and look at them in aggregate. And maybe switch some out because the pictures that they look too familiar. Yeah, they're hard choices. Yeah, they're gorgeous photos. Um, I, you know, I can keep going through these, but maybe somebody else has got something else they're thinking about. Not right now for me. Yeah, maybe just keep on through. Yeah, right. Okay, no problem. So the next spot is New Brunswick. Oh, this is interesting from a photographic technique standpoint. So 
Chris Radio had, he was traveling with a, a tilt shift lens. Mm -hmm. And there were some days when he didn't have really the best lighting conditions that he thought he could have. And he felt like he was doing a bad job and not getting me the pictures I needed. So he thought that he would use this tilt shift lens to uh, add a little bit of extra spice to the images. And when I saw a first shift of his pictures and I saw the photos shot with a tilt shift, I had to call him up right away. I said, Chris, please. <laughs> Put that lens away. You can't use it. And my concern was, much like the question Julia just asked, these pictures, although they might look really great singly or in a group of all the photographs done that way, I felt like to mix in a few of these photos with other more traditional photos would look really out of place. And so he just had to quit using that lens. And so um, New Brunswick, the, the, the landscape was beautiful, and we were trying to think about how do we shoot a picture of New Brunswick that makes it look different than other places. Uh, these, these photos, photos are beautiful, but if there's no uh, identifying characteristic. This helps a lot with the kayaks and mm. the sea mounts. And then this is a particularly famous bridge in New Brunswick. And so it was an important place to use a picture of this bridge. But you can see how difficult it is. I mean, it's just a picture of a bridge in a field, right? What, what are we going to do? And what Chris did, he decided that for a recognizable picture could only be taken in New Brunswick. He would go back to the same bridge in lighting conditions that really just made the bridge safe. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, um, moving on to another set of pictures by Chris is in Prince Edward Island. Now, now Prince Edward Island, Island was kind of tough because I, I really thought you know, Chris would go there, take a picture, and move out. And he spent about four days, and it was raining the whole time. And he, he just didn't, he could drive around and find out that places might work for a picture, but he didn't really have the lighting to go there. So he decided he drove way up north in Prince Edward Island to photograph this rock formation that's generically referred to as the teacup. Um, but then as he'd been there a few days, the weather started to cooperate and he came down and he took the more typical Prince Edward Island pictures. This is a wonderful picture of a church. And then he's got some pictures in the cove. <clears throat> and this was pretty nice, but we also was, were needing a picture of a town. Um, did the whole talk mute? I'm not getting any. Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah. Then... Um, we needed a picture of Lunenburg, so I couldn't use this picture at Prince Edward Island because it looked exactly like Lunenburg. And so then he found these wonderful sand dunes. And our editor, Keith Bellows, kept referring to Prince Edward Island as the million acre farm. And I had mentioned that to Chris, so he knew that he had to uh, get a picture of a million acre farm. Yeah. And so. Um, here, here is the million acre farm, but it's, it's kind of an uninspiring picture. The uh, need to have better light, and Chris wasn't willing to spend his good light there. And now we come to what you, more people would expect to see in Prince Edward Island, which is pictures of lighthouse. And so, so Chris stalked out this lighthouse, and then he waited until the light was just right. And finally, we have this picture on Prince Edward Island. This is the one that we ended up using. Cool. Why did you choose this one instead of the other one? I think I prefer the other one. This one. Of the lighthouse, yeah. I I you like this first one rather than that one? Yeah, I think so. But did the the sun sunset uh, play a great role for you? I think mostly what I like about this picture of it isn't so much the sunset. It's because mm -hmm. um, I I think maybe even cropping the sun out of this picture would make it a little bit stronger. But yeah. I love the way the light shines across that surface of the lighthouse and gives it yeah, just a little okay, bit of a, see you. Um, a little extra spark. This yeah. picture. It, it's kind of a middle of the day, ordinary type of picture. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I like the way that he's added, you know, that the composition works with the trees, but this just really has a little bit of a spring to it, you know. Yeah, I don't know. This one reminds me more of an island to me than the second one. Oh, this one here. Yeah, um, I, you know, I can see that. So I guess then, it's just yeah. a question of taste, too. Yeah, right, right. And also, um, I'm trying to remember, there were some other places that I had to use a more typical photo like this of, mm -hmm. you know, let's say a different destination. And maybe I had that in my mind, too. Okay. Yeah, so this next spot he went to was Georgian Bay. And although we love these beautiful scenic pictures, I think that 
the, these are not our go-to pictures for Traveler magazine. Um, he did a wonderful job here. It's shot in the evening, right after sunset, and it, it's a beautiful picture of the rocks and the lake. But I think we'd much rather have some sort of human habitation. Here's another shot in the same spot with like what may be the saddest looking lighthouse in the world, although it's very beautiful. It is. And then he started, go ahead. He started to add in the people here. And although the lake is nice and I like the people, I'm not crazy about this picture because you can see the way that the figures have turned in, you know, blended together into a single blob. I think if you're going to use a picture of silhouette, you need to really be responsible for that silhouette. Of course, the best silhouette in this picture is the folding chair, and I don't know that I really care to see that. And so then here's another photograph of the same place at the same time, and it works just a little bit better as a silhouette. But ultimately, I thought, well, we need to find a picture that combines the people and the place in one photograph. So we started to move towards this kind of picture that does a wonderful job of showing what the weather is like there. And this showing that people, you know, are, are enjoying the place. But ultimately, we went with this photograph, which is almost just a picture of rocks in the lake. But then it has a little bit of extra addition of the people back there. And may I ask one thing? Yes, please. Um, uh, what kind of yep. target audience did you have in mind when compiling the pictures? Uh, was it basically people who were familiar with Canada or uh, people uh, who you wanted to make uh, curious? I think the second, the people that we wanted to make curious about Canada okay. because we were trying to identify 50 places that maybe Canadians would know and yeah. the, the goal of the project was to excite people about Canada and show them what it all, you know, all it has to offer. Okay. Do you think it works that way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's a big difference uh, when uh, making decisions uh, about pictures, uh, yeah. depending on the audience. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that my favorite picture from this set is this one right here, uh, because it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it has a nice shape, and I, I like to think about how terrible the weather must be some part of the year <laughs> to make the tree grow like that. Um, but, you know, to show the lake, this was a nice way to do it. Okay, now, this thank is you. A, this is a set of pictures that Catherine did, a, a, kind of a smaller set. And so the, the next set is, um, this, is Salt Spring Island. And so this is, there's, a, there's much fewer pictures here because it's one of the places that had a little bit less and she kind of just darted in there. And this by far was one of my favorite pictures of the whole project. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's a vertical. And the template that we had in order to use this just... It, if I use a vertical picture, then we have to display it on the web just like we're seeing it now with the big black, you know, big gray bars on either side. It's just not working that. It, mm. it didn't work very well. So um, we did print this in a few places announcing the project, but I sure couldn't use this picture for, for the project, product, you know, for the product. And we used two pictures in Salt Spring Island. So Salt Spring Island is kind of a, a place where they have, I mean, I guess it's fair to call it a hippie island. There's a lot of that. Um, you know, crunchy granola nature to it, as we would say here in the States. And um, this is a beautiful picture of a cabin, but we ended up using this one picture because Catherine had been to uh, Salt Spring Island a few times, and she really loved the artisans, the crafts, the people there that made it the place it was. And so for the hero shop for this one, we're using this picture of a girl at the Stuff and Nonsense shop. Let's talk about this, this one. Um, part of our problem with trying to get a photographer to go to the right places was that Catherine had to work out all of the details. And she, kept, she called me up and she said, Dan, I really want to go to Haida Gwaii. And she was finished with all of her work in British Columbia. And really, we thought it would be great to go out to Guayanas to get a picture of the totem poles out there. And, it was really involved. She was in it Vancouver. Was really it was a $750 flight up to Gwai and up to Haida Gwai. Then she would have to hire a boat or a Zodiac. That was another $2,500. And the next thing you know, we're spending $1,500 for us to get a picture of this island. And I was talking to her, and I was just ready to say, you know, it's not worth it. Let's not go up there. And then I looked at a map of Canada while I was talking to her on the phone, and I realized that I needed two pictures from Winnipeg. And there's not a lot of stock photography available of Winnipeg. And I thought, you know, she could probably get to Winnipeg on Vancouver for a couple hundred bucks. And so I said, Canada, forget about Haida Gwaii, you're going to Winnipeg. So I sent her off to 
Winnipeg, we needed pictures of Winnipeg and Lake Winnipeg. And here's just a real quick look at what she did at Lake Winnipeg. So this is a town that's very well known for the, um, I think it's Icelandic residents, and it's a little shop. And Catherine loved this place, but it, it just didn't work in the kind of context of what we were doing. And so she was reduced to just trying to get the best picture she could of Lake Winnipeg. And she thought it was a pretty nice place, and she got the good weather. And we have these pictures, and they're all very much the same picture. And I wanted something that added and just a little bit of extra mystery to it. I do like this girl's the feeling, you know, that she's sort of out there by herself, and the kids running around making a sandcastle. And finally, I just and tried this photo because one, the clouds make it look like a very beautiful lake, and then there's just this kid's legs inexplicably sticking up out of the water. And I think that that was the time. If you can add a little bit of extra mystery to a picture, then your photo editor is really going to love you. <laughs> and that's proof that not all the water in Winnipeg's frozen. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, she was here in August, so she had a good chance of getting it. Um, I think we've gotten through a bunch of pictures. I don't know if anybody's got anything else they want to ask or some way to you know, bring this thing to a close. Well, uh, uh, I think uh, we just want to much, Dan, for uh, everything. Uh, great workshop. And uh, also, you know, apologies to all those folks for, with the technical sound difficulties we've had. Thank you for your patience with it. I think uh, we've uh, worked uh, them out through the uh, half hour here. And, uh, you know, we're off to the distillery district. Join us there for Dan's photo walk coming up in uh, 90 minutes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thanks for joining thanks, us. Thanks, folks. See you. Thanks, thanks Adam. Dan. All right.